Hello, welcome back to the Experts 11 Road to Glory series, where in the last episode, we managed to easily cruise past young Porter FC into the next round of the cup. But you have to wait until the end of this episode to find out who our cup opponents are. In this episode, we were up against Shark United, a team managed by someone we became good friends with while in the Ultimate League. They have been a follower of our PRs and one of the more active guys in the division. Hertz Van Rental Shark United are a club that used to win the Ultimate League a long time ago. They are season 6 champions and they have resurfaced under current management and were in the Ultimate League top flight last season. Unfortunately, despite the strong squad, they were relegated in their first season, so they are trying to get back up straight away. And this has happened to be at the same time that they crossed paths with us. Shark United's squad spine is very strong, although perhaps the goalkeeper isn't the world class one that Kyotia's killers have. But even so, Hubert Kossian of Shark United has been the X11 in both league and cup a few times. We've seen in previous seasons he has been often featured in the team of the week during the cup rounds. In midfield, they have two great pillars in Alvaro Nascimento and Adam Holyfield. However, Nascimento is injured for this game, which is a huge bonus for us. So hopefully we can get something out of the game as a result. But they've still got a very strong squad. And as you can see, quite a bit of depth in that midfield. Their weakest first choice midfielder is 12 bars, which they have two of. And in total, they have seven first choice midfielders. We, on the other hand, only have a starting 11, really, that we can work with. A 4-5-1 rigid squad formation. But can we flex it a bit, perhaps? Would that necessarily be enough to get something against Shark United? Well, I decided that we're going to be changing our formation for this game, so let's see the team news. Shark United line up in a 4 4 2 formation with Carlos Bruxales in goal. A back four Johnny McCammon, Rick Carter, Hubert Kostian, and Marco Vela. Midfield of Alan Holyfield, Mark Wheatman, Heriberto Nascimento, and Ricky Hugeland. Up front, Claudio Costa and Andy Halliday. On the bench, Dario Pelak, Elias Hancock, Evans Kamwanji, Morgan Spedding, and Rowan Irving. Knights have Ant Connolly in a 5-4-1 formation, so we're changing up a bit for this game. Back five of Pim van der Kreese, Ibrahim Kamara, Aquila Santa Maria, Devin Riley, and Raymond Hargreaves. Moving into the back five, using his adaptability as an all-rounder to make up that position. Midfield, Pierre Festink, Azra Zairi, Reza Taraeta, and Alvito Roma, while Celso Moto is up front on his own. Ryan Mulligan, Bapet Kanchanapum, Wajuna, Leonard Tingstrom, and Ian May is the bench. Let's go live to Langunna Stadium for the match. So, playing from left to right are Shark United in the blue strip with the yellow swipe on it, and with Hubert Kostin as the captain. Knights are with the red and yellow strip playing from right to left. The referee for this match is George Busk, skill 2, harshness 9. This is our first ever trip to Shark United's home stadium, the former league champions, because last time we played them in the cup, so that was a neutral venue obviously, so this is the first league game between the two sides. So in the other match in the division we have All Stars against Kyrie Knight Boats. Quite a bit of gap between these teams. Kyotia's Killers are against Highlanders Athletic. And Stephen Wolf Suckers versus FK Svaj Cernica. So a bit of spread out encounter. In fact this is the closest encounter in the division between us and Shark United. As we get the going away and in 5 minutes Knights on the card. Pim van der Kreese and Yoko for brutal play. Pim needs to be careful here, that is the second card of the season he's received. And another card. Racer Tower Etter the yellow card for Handball. Two yellow cards in the early minutes of this game. 15 minutes played. Neil Neil between Nets and Shark United. Shark against to create a single chance, but they are slightly edging the possession. That said, they do have a. No, they don't have a man advantage. It is both forward and midfield. They do have an extra striker up front, but currently we're negating them quite well, but we are failing to create anything. But at the end of the first half, Shark United have actually had the more possession, definitely. 56 possession, huge spikes towards the end of that first half, but no chances and no goals to speak of whatsoever. Hopeful for better in the second half. Maybe towards us that'll be better. But then again, a draw wouldn't be too bad a result, I wouldn't have thought, even though Svash Cernica are currently ahead of us in the rankings, because Svash Cernica are leading against Steppenwolf Suckers. Meanwhile, Kyoto's Killers are taking the lead against Highlanders Athletic and Kyrie Knight Boats and the All-Stars is a nil-nil draw. As we get into the second half, Shark United have the first chance of the match as a breakaway. It's Andy Halliday who tries to split this ball with a wild play shot 
as wide back clear margin. Andy Halliday, 24-14, so not quite the superstar he was would have been last season with 23-14, but starts the original yellow card for handball. Next have a chance, first chance of the game for us. Alvita Romo driving shot on goal, and it's just over the crossbar. So close, our strategy of trying to contain Shark United and then hit them on the counter attack. Had a good chance there, but we didn't really get it working properly, and Sharks are proving very difficult to break down themselves. Hubert Kostian, that's those performances are no lie. We've got a free kick for Shark United's Marco Vela. And that's a goal for Shark United. Marco Vela with a free kick direct into the back of the net. And Knights are up against it now. We've given away a free kick. Our strategy has backfired a bit there, giving Shark United a free chance. And Vela was able to beat Connolly. And there's an injury here. Alvito Roma has picked up a knock. Well, things are starting to collapse before us now. And Shark United have another chance here. It's Claudio Costa. And straight at the goalkeeper. Claudio Costa who's turned 18 bar striker for this season. The chance here for Knights though. Alvito Roma. And it's caught by Bruxales. We cannot get the equaliser we need here. Shark United are leading and are going to set to win this game. Look at the things. Andy Halliday has warded off for the goalkeeper. Well, time is running out. Knights are set for their first defeat in Division 1 level. Unless we can find something in Nascimento. And that's stopped by Ant Connolly. 86 minutes played. And is currently coming down to a nail biting finish. As Shark United have another free kick here. And it's training goal by Marco Vela. Fresh outside the post. Well, we're coming towards the end of the game, and that is the end of the game, and Knights have suffered their first league defeat of the new season. First league defeat in Division 1 level, and as a result, our unbeaten start of the season is obviously over. That goes without saying, really, but we do drop from third place down to fifth in the league, and perhaps relegation is not too far away. We're really one point ahead of Highlanders Athletic. Hubert Kossian is the man of the match for Shark United, while Pim van Kreese was the man of the match for Knights of the UFC. You are probably wondering why did I change from my usual 4-5-1 formation to a 5-4-1 formation for this match. Well, it's quite simple actually. Shark United have some really, really powerful midfielders. Even without Alvaro and Escamento, there was still plenty of quality there to call upon. And I felt that the quality of midfield and performances they were giving out if they picked a good playmaker, then it had the potential to be able to outskill our defence. So I decided to increase the strength of our defence, try and stop them creating any chances and hit them on the break. That's what I was hoping for. And I was also trying to be a bit more aggressive to counter that. But of course, I failed to take into account the fact that being more aggressive does give away free kicks. And that proved to be our cost eventually because Marco Vela was expert at free kicks there. Drove that straight into the back of the net past Ant Connolly, and as a result, we have lost for the first time in the division. Maybe it was better if we stuck to what we knew in the 4 5 1. I should probably also mention, though, that Hertz did play very well on the tactics front. He managed to correctly guess our attacking style, and also he decided to mark Celso Moto, which really negated our counter attack strategy. So, well done to Hertz. You played well and deserved the win in the end. So, well played. Definitely one of the toughest opponents we've had to play ever so far as my time as manager. <laughs> Team of the week is Dave Reese of Kiyoshi's Killers and Goal. A back four of Halleck Boskirk, Kiyoshi's Killers, Gennaro Pasato, Kiyoshi's Killers, Hubert Kossian, Shark United, and Strahinja Gustach, FK Svaj Sernica. Midfield, Tony Bjorkwald, Kiyoshi's Killers, Tio Sigi Topuzovic, FK Svaj Sernica, Kurt Flynn, Kiyoshi's Killers, and Rodrigo Cordero, Kiyoshi's Killers. Up front, Claudio Costa, Shark United, and Proving Brigham, Highlanders Athletic. Hertz was the manager of the round for Shark United. As I said, he called a lot of things well there and successfully countered us. So, one up to me on my own preparation there. Well played, Hertz. Not many have actually done that, so kudos to you. Anyway, that's that for now. Let's see the standings after four games in Division 1. As we can see, Kiosia's Killers have made an excellent start to the new season. Having won three games and draw one with an unbeaten start on 10 points. The All-Stars are also unbeaten so far, although that does include two draws among their two wins, so not quite as good, but still a respectable eight points. FK Svaj Cernic have jumped up to third place after their win away to Steppenwolf Suckers. Now, that means that we dropped down to fifth place because Shark United beat us, so 
Shark United have also jumped us on the table thanks to that win. Highlanders Athletic remain in the relegation spaces after losing 4-1 to Kyoto Killers. Kyra Nightboats have got a 0-0 draw against the All-Stars, which is actually pretty incredible to be fair. And Steppenwolf Suckers pop up the table, having lost all four games so far this season. Right then, I kept you in suspense last episode. It's time to find out who our next cup opponents are. The next cup opponents are... Dubai Dynamos, a Division 5 side with seemingly a few activity problems. Well, that's certainly interesting. It means we have effectively an extra round two in the cup, so more free game time for the youths, I guess. We'll have to look at their squad because it is quite stronger than the last one we faced, but I still think as an opponent we can get past quite easily. So, in the next episode, we'll be playing Dubai Dynamos in the cup. See you guys next time.